am surrounded by a bunch of cowboy boots and maybe you're asking yourself why are you surrounded by a bunch of cowboy boots and uh, what we're going to be talking about in this video is ROM and uh, eventually we're going to get around to uh, how ROM is related to all these cowboy boots so that should be an interesting story and basically what I want to do in this video is do a little terminology disambiguation for you and uh, explain a little bit of the evolution of ROM and uh, some of the phrases you might hear, because you might hear about ROM, or you might hear about PROM, programmable read-only memory, or you might hear about EEPROM, erasable programmable read-only memory, or you might hear about EEPROM, or E squared PROM, which stands for electrically erasable programmable read-only memory. <laughs> so that's a whole lot of read-only memory. And if you remember our diagram, this diagram, uh, we talked about ROM and the purpose that ROM plays, the role ROM plays in relation to the computer. And ROM stands for read-only memory, read-only memory. And on ROM, there is something stored there called BIOS, right? And BIOS was our basic input-output system. So that's the basic software that gets the computer running. So when the computer is in an off state, right, when you first turn that power on, the CPU, the computer doesn't know how to load things from the hard drive into RAM. It doesn't have input-output capabilities yet. And uh, so there's no way, you know, the, the hard drive is connected to RAM through the motherboard, and there's no way for any componentry on the motherboard to know how to talk yet to, um, at least before ROM there wasn't, there was no way for any componentry on the motherboard to talk to the hard drive and uh, be able to get information from the hard drive. And so ROM was software that was built right onto the motherboard, right? ROM read-only memory. It was memory that could, couldn't be written to originally. It was read-only memory. And um, it was built right onto the motherboard. So there was some software built right onto the motherboard. And that software is the basic input-output system. And so when that basic input-output system got loaded, it was that software that was encoded, just, you know, switches that were off and on, just broken that way, burned in that way. So those zeros and ones were, once they were created, that's the way they were forever. And uh, that basic software would allow the input-output system to start operating, at which point the componentry on the motherboard knew how to start talking to the hard drive because the basic input-output system, being able to get things in and out, um, had been loaded and uh, and then we could start loading things off the hard drive into RAM. So ROM was read-only memory and on ROM that's where we found BIOS, basic input output system. Well eventually people started to want to change uh, ROM and be able to um, be able to update it, you know, update the software, the BIOS software and be able to also change settings. And so what they did with ROM read-only memory, here we go. What they did with it was uh, they created something where they had a little battery in there. And that little battery, even when your computer was unplugged, would continue to provide a little trickle of electricity. And that little trickle of electricity would be able to, uh, you know, keep uh, certain, you know, keep things on even though the rest of the computer is off. So you could change settings in ROM. And um, being able to change settings you know, allowed you to adjust different things. And uh, so anyhow, at first there was just this battery. And, uh, and then we had programmable read-only memory. And then we had uh, erasable programmable read-only memory. And then eventually now we have, you know, kind of more like flash drives where they don't need any power to store things and you could write to them really easily. And they are also hardware, they're firmware you know, they are uh, solid state, solid state drives. So uh, now we have a re electrically erasable programmable read-only memory where we could update our ROM and we could also put settings into it and things like that. So that's a little bit of information about the different, you know, the history of ROM and uh, the different types of ROMs that have been out there. And uh, eventually what, what the computer needs to do is it needs to boot up. And so when the computer is starting, we sometimes say, hey, the computer is booting up or it's booting. Well, where does this phrase booting come from? And now we're getting back around to the boots. <laughs> and uh, in Texas, they have this saying called uh, picking yourself up by your bootstraps. 
And what, you know, or bootstrapping is a saying you'll, or a phrase you'll hear sometimes. And what that means, picking yourself up by your bootstraps or bootstrapping, is that you are starting from ground zero and you're getting yourself up and running all by yourself. And that's basically what computers need to do, right? Um, they need to be able to get up and running all by themselves. And so BIOS really allows a computer to boot because it's burned right onto the motherboard um, originally, you know, and it was stored in the componentry known as ROM. And that basic input-output system allowed the computer all by itself to, we just pushed a power button and that computer would load all of the needs, all the necessary basic input-output system software so that it could then communicate with the drives and start loading operating systems and programs and things like that. And so computers were able to pick themselves up by their bootstraps, get up and running all by themselves, and we call it booting for that reason. That's why computers, when we refer to computers starting up, we say, oh, it's booting. Um, and uh, that's where it comes from. And thus, you now understand how cowboy boots are related to ROM and BIOS.